of Trinity 3, Sunday, Work of the Greatest, Grace of the Least. What is man that he should be clean, or he that is born of a woman that he could be righteous? Job 15, verse 14. Dear Redeemed, Who are you, Job, that you should be clean in God's eyes? Who is anyone born of a woman, yourself included, Job, that you should be righteous? That is part of the counsel of Eliphaz the Temanite to Job, informing him that God is just and the wicked suffer. Eliphaz told the grieving man that the sinner suffers. If one suffers much, then one has sinned much. Search your soul and life, Job. You surely conceived of some mischief and have done something horrible in God's sight to be punished like this? Job replies that such counsel is from miserable comforters whose windy words have no end. Concerning those born of women, listen to our Savior, Jesus, as he continues to speak about his kinsman, John the Baptist. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I say to you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before you, who will prepare your way before you. For I say to you, among those born of women, there is none greater than John. But he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Luke 7, verses 26 through 28. Abraham, Sarah, Moses, Ruth, David, Isaiah, Mary, among those born of women, there is none greater than John. Why? What was so special about John? Concerning his person, nothing. Like the list mentioned, like you, like me, and all those born to a man and a woman, John was conceived in sin. The son of Zechariah and Elizabeth bore the image of Adam. Genesis 5, verse 3, and was, by nature, sinful and unclean. Concerning the office that he had been born to fill, the prophet forerunner of Jesus, there was none born of woman greater than John. The Son of God would not enter into this world until the messenger who prepared the way for the Lord had come. Then the word would be conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Christ would fulfill the law perfectly. Jesus would defeat the devil, shed his holy blood for all sins, give his life as the ransom for our salvation, die in our stead, rise again from the dead, and ascend into heaven until his second advent. All of this would take place according to God's promise and in the fullness of time. In Matthew 5.19, Jesus uses the phrase, least in the kingdom of heaven, to refer to someone outside the kingdom of heaven. Now, in Matthew eleven twelve, Jesus uses the same phrase. Luke records it as least in the kingdom of God. If it means the same thing here as in the Sermon on the Mount, then the only one who would be least in the kingdom and yet greater than John would be Jesus, who was crucified by man and forsaken by God, yet remained the Son of God. On the cross, Jesus was the least because he took all sins upon himself. On the other hand, if least in the kingdom refers to the least person within the kingdom, then that person is greater than John the office holder. Such a soul who is the least in the kingdom of God has been brought to faith in Christ by the Holy Spirit, is declared perfect by God, is justified by the grace of God, has Christ's righteousness, is a son of God, has eternal life, is an heir of heaven, and much more. The greatness of the gospel given to the least in the kingdom of God is greater than the doings of the office holder. Now, dear redeemed, none of this is intended to diminish the steadfast courage of John, to deny his faithfulness, or to give any impression that John is not with his Lord in paradise. God's grace was sufficient for him as it is for you. John was saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus and not because of John's works as an office holder. In other words, the office holder does not have eternal life and salvation because of his office. The greatness of John was in his office, not his person. 
What is man that he should be clean? Nothing. Or he that is born of a woman that he could be righteous? Again, nothing. Who is Jesus that man should be clean? The crucified and risen Emmanuel? Or the Christ, born of a woman, that man might be righteous? The sufficient ransom and redeemer? Prayer. Almighty God, who, through John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Christ, did proclaim salvation, grant that I may know my Savior and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, my Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Hymn number 417, stanzas 1 and 3. O Jesus, Lamb of God, who art, the life and comfort of my heart. I, wretched sinner, come to thee, and bring so many sins with me. St. John the Baptist biddeth me to cast my burden, Lord, on thee, since thou hast left thy heavenly throne, that for our sins thou mightst atone. <laughs> 